Once again here, we're here to tell you about two great products that can help you make molds without actually having to assemble mold boxes. You can do vertical molds without any, and free form the actual rub, rubber compounds. First compound is Urogel 770, which forms a hard backup. You can see here. And then Instagel 40. Now we have different types of it. You can see how this is nice and uh, uh, rubbery and it's a uh, painted on actually to the vertical surface. This is actually a statue where there was a, this rubber liner was made by just buttering on the uh, Instagel 40. And then the next day, a release agent was put onto the Instagel 40 and the Urogel 770 was put on and allowed to cure another evening. And the next day you end up with these hard shells. And when these are combined and bolted together and flipped upside down, they'll be molded into a plaster statue. For all those who want to make a mold without having to build a mold box and do it off of a three-dimensional piece, we've got the great product for that. It's Instagel 40. It starts out as two thin liquids, a part A and a part B. And we mix these 50-50 by volume and then wait about three or four minutes. These will become almost like a buttery, creamy mayonnaise. And then we're going to butter it onto this, this three-dimensional piece to form uh, our inner rubber liner for our three-dimensional mold. As I said, this is a liquid two-part system. So we pre-measured a plastic beaker to equal portions. Here we have 250 mils of A and 250 mils of B. And we're going to just pour these into our beaker. You can see they're nice and liquid and in the very beginning. And it's important to get the, the uh, liquid components uh, somewhat close in proportion because urethanes are not like epoxies. They need to be pretty much on the ratio that's stated on the uh, technical data. This one is one to one. So we're going to take a flat spatula, not round, but a flat spatula, and we're going to go and mix this. Be careful that you want to hurry and mix. You've got about a minute before the thickening begins. So it's good to do smaller batches rather than larger batches to accomplish your goal. Scrape the edges and make sure that you're coming around nice, broad strokes, brisk. We're going to mix for about a minute because once the gel happens, it's difficult to get A and B to incorporate back into the gel. Okay, we pretty much got it. That's pretty much it. We're going to scrape our spatula off. Now we're going to set it down. We're going to wait about three minutes. And we're going to come back and we're going to apply it to this piece. Okay, so it's been about three or four minutes, so we're going to check our gel that we mixed up. Well, it looks like it's gelled pretty nicely. Take the spatula and I can kind of show you. That's nice, creamy gel. It's still movable, but yet it still stacks very nicely. So I'm going to coat this piece that we've already pre-coated with wax. So I've got a throwaway brush. Don't try to clean the brushes up, just use the throwaway. We're going to liberally apply the material. Now your first layer of the gel, you'd like to take your time with it to make sure that you don't trap any unwanted air into the detail. And you can see it goes on quite nicely. We're going to have about, uh, oh, maybe 10, 15 minutes worth of time to work with that, but you can see it's nice and creamy. And so we're going to put this on and it doesn't, uh, doesn't run off. This will allow us to stack at least a half inch of rubber uh, per application. So I think for this one we really only need a couple of applications of the rubber. And you can see it goes on real nice, it covers, and I'm taking my time to make sure that I, I don't trap any unwanted air into the uh, surface of the mold because this will actually be the face of our, uh, our mold here. And you can see it's going on really nice. Get some depth out of that. And the uh, material is just barely warm to touch. Form a nice flange area on the bottom. This makes a very nice glove mold. Okay, we pretty much got our rubber on the way we want it. And as I mentioned earlier, you can uh, continue to brush on layer after layer of the polymer to uh, the Instagel 40 to get it as thick as you think that you might need so that you can handle the mold and to be as durable as you need. 
Okay, that's pretty much it. Okay, we've, we've uh, finished the application of the InstaGel 40. We're going to allow this to cure overnight. And tomorrow we're going to come back, apply more wax over the cured surface of the InstaGel 40, and apply, apply a hard shell backup, which is the Eurogel 770. And we're going to show you how to do that after this cures tomorrow. Well, it's been 24 hours, and our InstaGel 40 mold is fully cured. We put wax over it, which explains why it's a little different color. If this were a silicone piece, then you wouldn't need any release agent at all. The Eurogel 770 is very similar in mixing as the Eurogel or the InstaGel 40. It starts off as two thin liquids. Then we're going to mix it 50-50 by volume. Now we've color coded these. The A side's black and the B side's white, which is very diagnostic for mixing. Because when the two are put together, they'll swirl and have a candy stripe. And you're looking for an even gray tone to know that you got the material mixed properly. So we're going to mix this together. We're going to wait only about a minute, maybe two minutes at the max, till we develop a full gel. We're going to show you that. And then we're going to butter that on the outside of this piece. Tomorrow, we'll be able to pull the piece off. There'll be a stiff backup. They'll be exactly contoured to fit this silicone mold. This is a Eurogel 770 that was done in a green for a client. As you can see, very hard, very durable. So uh, anyway, let's get on with it. So we've pre-measured our uh, beaker 50-50 by volume. And we're going to, doesn't matter which one that you start out with, but you want to pour the component A up to wherever you marked it. And we're going to pour the component B right on top of that. Now once you pour the B into the A, the clock starts. So you need to get on and start mixing. We're going to use a flat spatula. We're going to mix until we have an even gray tone. And you want to be quite quick about this because after the material starts to gel and you don't have it all the way mixed, you'll never get uh, part A and part B properly mixed. It's also best to do small batches of this material because as you can see, it starts to gel quite rapidly. So we're pretty much ready to go at this point in time. I want to show you how that is again. Look how nice that picks up and how nice and buttery that is. You got about 10 minutes to work this material. And so we're going to start by applying the nice and thick and heavy. You can see you can really stack the material and it doesn't want to run off. And we're going to do a section of this mold and we're going to pull it off tomorrow. Now the good thing about this material is it has multiple uses. As you're seeing right now, we're using it as a uh, rigid backup for a flexible liner. But it can also be brushed into a mold to create positive pieces. This is a piece that was done out of a mold with a human face, and you can see it was just brushed in. Day two, we could pull the shell out. Same thing here. This is some ornate uh, molding where it was brushed in to form the ornate hard surface that can be painted. And then polyurethane foam, the three pound molding foam, was poured in behind that to form a body, and it adhered quite well to the Eurogel 770. So you can see it has two uses as an outside shell, and also to actually make pieces from the interior of the mold. Uh, you can use it with uh, silicone rubber, or you can use it with uh, polyurethane. Now if you use it with polyurethane, you need to always use either a wax, a paste wax, like Johnson's Paste Wax is a good one, there's lots of other ones, no car wax, or you could use silicone spray as a great release agent with that.